Hello everyone, welcome to the ICT-10 PCS coding series. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and follow the playlist from the beginning so that you understand all the root operations thoroughly. This is part 34 of the inpatient coding series and today we will learn about the root operations from group number 5 of the ICD-10 PCS. We are talking about the medical and surgical section. I'm Vinay Kumar. I carry an overall experience of 20 years in the US healthcare industry with vast experience in medical coding, auditing, training, and also mentoring. I have helped many uh, professionals in gaining knowledge and also preparing for medical coding certifications, including but not limited to both AHIMA and the AAPC. I have uh, taught people for the CCS examination and also for the AAPC's CPC and CPMA examinations. So the, at the end of this learning session, we will have a better understanding of coding the root operation restriction from the fifth group of root operations. Remember, we are talking about the medical and surgical section specifically, and this is the largest section of the ICD-10 PCS. So there are a total of nine groups of root operations, and there are a total of 31 root operations in these nine groups. These groupings are divided based on similar kinds of procedure, uh, procedures put into a single group. The attributes of the procedure or the kind of procedure is what decides which group it will fall into. So overall, there are nine groups and 31 root operations. And today we are talking about the fifth group of root operations that alter the diameter or route of a tubular body part. So we are talking about tubular body parts in this group. There are four root operations in this fifth group. Restriction, occlusion, dilation and bypass. Today we are looking at the root operation restriction which carries a character value of V. Root operations are the most important aspect of building an ICD-10 PCS code. So remember, root operations you always have to pick up based on the objective or goal of the procedure. Always read the definitions of the root operations to compare them and arrive at a final root operation which is correct based on the procedure. Now, the root operation restriction is defined as partially closing an orifice or the lumen of a tubular body part. So any tubular body part, if you are closing it partially, not completely, then it is coded as restriction as the root operation. Now, the orifice can be a natural uh, orifice or an artificial, uh, artificially created orifice like a stoma. Now, these are examples of procedures that are coded and coded under the root operation restriction. Esophagogastric fundoplication, laparoscopic banding for obesity, endovascular aortic aneurysm repair with or without a device, clipping of cerebral aneurysm, placement of restrictive stent in the lacrimal duct. These are examples of restriction as the root operation. Now, a few important things that you need to remember when you are coding restriction as the root operation. Usually, intraluminal or extraluminal clips are frequently used to accomplish the uh, objective of restriction and occlusion procedures. Rest restriction and occlusion are similar kinds of procedures. So, you need to carefully review the operative report and make sure that you are coding for the device if appropriate. Now, if clips are left inside after the procedure is completed then the appropriate device value should be selected for the sixth character in the PCS code. However, if these clips are not left inside then the procedure is coded as no device. You have to research the procedure technique carefully to identify this portion. Again, if the objective of let's say for example embolization procedure 
Okay, so if the objective of an embolization procedure is to completely close a vessel, the root operation occlusion is coded. Okay, however, if the objective of the embolization procedure is to narrow the lumen of a blood vessel, the root operation is coded as restriction. So restriction is partial closure, occlusion is complete closure. That's the key point. Now, uh, as an example, in the esophagogastric fundoplication procedure, the gastric fundus of the stomach is wrapped around the lower end of the esophagus, okay, which reinforces esophageal sphincter uh, closing function. The function of the esophageal uh, sphincter is performed. Okay, So what essentially here uh, is done is the amount of food that goes from the esophagus to the stomach is restricted. Okay, Now, the surgery actually strengthens the valve between the esophagus and the stomach and it is used to treat gastric reflux disease. Okay. Now, Nissen fundoplication. This Nissen is a common type of fundoplication procedure that is generally performed. This is a classic example of restriction as the root operation where the lumen of the stomach is uh, closed only partially. It's not closed completely. That's the reason we code it to restriction as the root operation. So here's an example of coding the root operation restriction. The procedure performed is an embolization of the anterior cerebral artery aneurysm. The surgeon made a very small nick in the skin and using image guidance, the catheter is inserted through the skin and advanced to the anterior cerebral artery. Next, the detachable coated platinum coils are inserted through the catheter and placed within the aneurysm for embolization. So basically, this is an embolization procedure. Okay, so in this case, the first character is zero for the medical and surgical section. Second character is three for the body system. Okay, which is upper arteries since the procedure is on the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, now the third character is V for the root operation, which is restriction. For the body part, fourth character, uh, anterior cerebral artery does not have its own body part value. If you look at this table, you do not see anterior cerebral artery anywhere, right? So for the fourth part, if you look up the body part key, Okay, uh, if you look up at anterior cerebral artery in the body part key, it will lead you to intracranial artery. So the fourth character, the body part here should be intracranial artery. For the fifth character, the approach is percutaneous since a catheter is inserted and through the catheter, the procedure is performed. Sixth character is D, which is an intraluminal device because detachable coated platinum coils are inserted. And the seventh character is Z for the qualifier, which is nothing but no qualifier. So the code for the embolization of the anterior cerebral artery aneurysm is 0, 3, V, G, 3, D and Z. Now, the key points to remember from this video, if the objective of an embolization procedure specifically is to completely close a blood vessel, the root operation is occlusion. However, if the ob objective of the embolization procedure is to narrow the lumen but not completely close it, then the root, o root operation should be restriction. So you need to carefully compare between restriction and occlusion when you are coding similar procedures. Complete closure is occlusion, partial closure is restriction. So you'll find the ICD-10 PCS coding manual online in this link. Uh, there is something called as tables and uh, index. Once you go to this link, you'll find a zip file which has the tables and index. You can download it from there and use it for coding. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please subscribe and support the channel. I really hope these videos help everyone in learning ICD-10 PCS. 
Okay, and uh, I will also start the CPT and ICD-10 CM coding uh, videos with examples uh, pretty soon. Thank you so much.